But God said for Hezekiah that day to prove to him or to guarantee that he was going to heal him, he was going to take the sun and make it go backwards 10 degrees. What is 10 degrees? What is 10 degrees? Yeah. Well, from there... All the way to there is 180 degrees. So up there is 90 degrees. So it went back 10 degrees. The shadow of the sun moved the opposite direction. Only God could do that. That was an amazing thing. That was a miracle. God did a miracle for Hezekiah. And Hezekiah, three days later, what? He was strong enough to go into the temple and to worship God. And he did not die. So, but when the sun does something, who knows about it? Who can see if the sun does something different? God. God, God did it. God could see it. Who else could see it? Could we see it? Yeah. We could see it. Could the people in Chicago see it? If the sun moved? Yep. Yeah. Could the people in New York see it? Yep. Yeah. Could the people in... Um, in, in China see it yes. yeah. could the people in Tokyo see it yeah. yes everybody all over the whole world would have been able to see that the sun moved Even wouldn't it Antarctica. Antarctica everywhere oh, yeah. they would have seen that the sun moved and that would have been amazing because the sun always goes the one direction well in the city of Babylon In the city of Babylon, all the way over here, so Hezekiah lived here, all the way over here in Babylon, they noticed that the sun moved. Everybody would have noticed, but they thought, oh my, what is that? I wonder what happened to make the sun move. And a little bit later, they heard that the king in Jerusalem had been sick, and that he was healed, and that it was when he got healed that the sun moved and they did not they did not know about God so they must have thought he must have some very great magical powers that was able to make him feel better and move the sun at the same time and so the king of Babylon sent some of his special people to go and to talk to Hezekiah and Hezekiah he saw that some ambassadors from Babylon had come to meet with him and what do you think Hezekiah did? He got excited. He started thinking, oh, people from Babylon are coming to see me. I must be important. I did have the sun move just because I got better. Now, who moved the sun? God did. Who gave Hezekiah his help? God did. But Hezekiah started feeling like he was important. And so Hezekiah greeted these people from Babylon. They, were, they did not believe in God. They came because, the Bible says, they came because of the wonder. Because of the, the, the strange, magical thing that had happened. But Hezekiah showed them all of his kingdom. Hezekiah said, yes. He must have said something like, yes, I'm great. Look at all the things I have. Look at all the spears and swords that I have. Look at all the stacks of money that I have. Look at all the cities and um, riches that I have. Now how did Hezekiah get all that stuff? From God. He got it from God. What? But he told these Babylonian ambassadors, he showed them everything in his whole kingdom. And then those people, they, they were impressed. They thought, wow, this is really neat. And they heard about the story of how the sun went back. And they headed home. And as soon as they left, the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah. And he said, Hezekiah, what did the men, those visitors, where were those visitors from? And Hezekiah said, oh, Isaiah? They are from a long, 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 long ways away. They are from Babylon. Long way away. And they came to see my kingdom. And Isaiah said, well, 
King Hezekiah, <coughs> what did you show them in your kingdom? And he said, I showed them everything. I showed them every single thing, all the cities, all the bars of gold, all the silver, all the weapons, all the swords and the shields. I showed them everything. I showed them the temple. I showed them everything. And Isaiah said, King Hezekiah, God says that everything that you showed them will be taken away all the way to Babylon someday. What did that mean? That they're going to come for it. They're going to come and take it all. God judged Hezekiah for his... What is it when we think that we did something and we have something? Uh, look me. Proudness. It's pride. It's pride. God hates pride. God blessed Hezekiah, but then Hezekiah started thinking that he was something, that he did something. If you are ever... How do, how do we get everything that we have? Uh, from God. Everything we have is from God. Even if, even if we go and work for it, God gave us the strength and the brains to be able to figure out how to, how to do it. Even if you make something, you made that because God gave you the ability to make it. If you are blessed with something, you have that because God provided it for you. And when we boast about something that we did good, when we um, think that we are better than somebody else, when we do these types of things, when we, we look down on others, that is pride, and God hates pride. And that is why God punished Hezekiah. Each one of us, pride is one of the easiest things for human beings to do. And we need to always remember that, and we need to always confess to God when we have been proud. Now, it's not wrong for us to have things, and it's not wrong for us to be good at things. Right now, how many of you have seen some things in the Olympics? Those are some pretty good athletes, aren't they? It's not wrong for them to be good at it, but it's wrong, it's sin if they think that they did it. If they think that they did it by themselves. No, God. God is the one that gave them the ability to get better at that and to do that. And when you do something that's good, you need to remember that God gave you that ability and you should not think that you're better than somebody else. Like, I'm a better person than they are because I can do this and they don't know how to do it yet. That's sin. That's boasting and pride, and that's sin, and God hates that. Now, in about 15 years, something happened to Hezekiah. Everything got took. No. No. He died. Remember? Isaiah said, you're going to live for 15 more years, and in 15 years, he died. Now, what happens when the king of Israel, the king of Judah, dies? What happens? <laughs> Allie? There's a new king. Aaron? His son. His son becomes the king. And his son would have been the son of uh, his father and the grandson of his grandfather and the son, the son, son. And from whose family was the kings of Judah? From whose family was the kings of Judah? King. Remember? God promised this one man that he would always have somebody to sit on his throne. Sabrina, sit back. Who would always have a have, have a have a someone to sit on the throne of Israel? Because the kids. The kids. Who who was it? Who did God promise that to? You know, Stephen. I'm thinking of the Not right now. I think you know. It was King David, right? King David. God promised King David that he would always have somebody to sit on his throne, and Hezekiah's in the family of David. And Hezekiah's son was the next king, and his name was Manasseh. Now, King Manasseh, if you looked at what King Manasseh did, and you looked at what King Hezekiah did, you would not believe that Manasseh was the son of Hezekiah, because Manasseh was an evil, wicked king. King Manasseh, he, right away, he decided he was not going to 
worship God only, and he got some idols to worship. They built altars all around the city of Jerusalem. And then he got himself a big piece of wood, and he had somebody carve it really special into, into an idol. And he took that carved idol, and he put it right in the temple, in God's temple. He put it right there in the temple where you would go to worship God, and there is an idol, a carved idol. And then he got even worse. He decided that he was going to worship the idols of the lands around them, and those idols said that you should offer your children as sacrifice to them. Yes, Manasseh took some of his children and he offered them as sacrifices to the idols. Manasseh was very wicked, very wicked, and he even got the children of Judah that lived there to follow him in his wickedness. And one day, God sent somebody to Manasseh. What, do you, who, what kind of man do you think he sent to Manasseh? Silas? A man of God? What does the Bible in the Old Testament call men of God? A prophet. That's right. God sent a prophet. He sent several prophets. But he sent a prophet to Manasseh and said, God says, you better stop this. You're going to get judged. Your kingdom is going to be taken away. And everything is going to be ruined if you don't turn from your sins. And Manasseh, he felt like, I've got so much power, I don't care what this prophet says. Now, what is that? If you say, I have power, I don't care what a prophet says. What is that? It's sin. What kind of sin is it? What do you think? I don't care about those things. I'm, I'm powerful. I have more power than that. It's pride. It is. He said, it doesn't matter. I don't care. In fact, during Manasseh, when Manasseh lived, they killed prophets of God. The Bible says that that prophet said to, to Manasseh, if you don't turn from your ways, everything you have, you, not everything you have, you are going to be taken away. You are going to be captured. And that's what happened. The Assyrians were the ones with the mighty power at the time, but they came and they broke into the city of Jerusalem and they took what they wanted. They didn't take a lot of people, but they took King Manasseh. They took King Manasseh and they, this just hurts just to even think about it, but they put a hook in his nose. How many of you have ever seen a picture of a bull that's got a, like a ring in his nose and they have a rope on it and they, pull, they, they lead the bull around by the ring in his nose? Yeah, that's what they did to King Manasseh. They put a hook in his nose, and they chained him up, and they walked him all the way, not to their capital city. So their capital is Nineveh. They walked him all the way to Babylon. King Manasseh was in jail, led there like a big bull with a hook in his nose, all the way to Babylon, and he sat there in prison because of his pride and his rebellion. And as he sat there, I wonder if he thought about some stuff. He didn't have any kingdom to rule, did he? All he had to do is sit there in prison and hope that they gave him some food to eat. And as Manasseh sat there in prison, I think he must have thought about home. He must have thought about what it was like when he was actually the king ruling. And he probably thought about when he grew up. When he grew up, who was the king when he grew up? His dad. His dad. And his dad, even though he had pride and God judged him for that, his dad was a righteous king and he did what was right. And King Manasseh must have thought about his dad and what his dad, and who his dad worshipped. And King Manasseh, he might even have thought about what his great, 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 great grandfather Solomon had said when he was praying. And he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He might have thought about that. He might have thought, well, I'm one of God's people. If I, and I'm in trouble. But God said that if I will humble myself. Oh, I don't want to humble myself. 
I think I'm important, but anymore, does he think he's that important? And he realized that if he would humble himself and pray and seek God's face and turn from his wicked ways, do you think God would forgive a man like this who sacrificed his own children to idols, who hated God, who put up an altar in, in God's temple? Would God no. forgive a man like that? Yeah. He would. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Manasseh realized that, and the Bible says that Manasseh prayed. He prayed to God, and he confessed his sin, and he turned from his sin, and God heard him. God heard him. What do you think God did for Manasseh? He doesn't do this for everybody, but God gave him favor in his captor's sight, and God had those that put him in chains let him go free. And they let him go back to Jerusalem, and they let him be the king in his own land again. And Manasseh came back, and when he was king in his own land again, what do you think he did? Took down all the idols. He did, because he really... He didn't just say things with his words. In his heart, he had turned to God. He took down the idols. He took down the idol out of the temple. He cleaned up the temple, and he went to the temple, and he worshipped God. And God let him rule because he had turned from his sin and had believed on him. Now, Manasseh was a very proud man, and Hezekiah, for a little while, he had pride in his heart. And today... I want you to remember that God hates pride. We don't talk, the, the word hate is a strong word, and a lot of people use it, and they don't really even know what they're, they're saying by it. But we know for sure that God hates pride. God says that pride brings a man low. God says that he will punish those that are filled with pride. And so God doesn't hate people who are proud. He hates pride, and he will punish those that get proud. And so when we are tempted to think, I'm better than other people, we need to remember that's pride and not think that way. When we brag about what we have at home or what we are able to do, when we brag about our accomplishments and our possessions, we need to stop that right away because that's pride. And God hates pride. When we look at others and look down on them, that's pride. When we think that we are good all by ourselves, when we think of the things we have and think, I have this, and don't remember that God gave us those things, that's pride, and God hates pride. And God probably won't put a hook on our, in our nose and chains on our wrists and carry us off to another country, but God will punish pride. And we need to make sure that we do not let pride stay in our heart heart, in our mind, in our mouth, we need to cut pride out of our life. Otherwise, we will pay the price for pride.